A pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome to CMPS 3012. I am Mrs. Ladine Forrester Lambe. Um, we are winding down in this course, and we just have about two weeks remaining. That includes this week. Tonight's objectives includes the following. We'll be going over our live session objectives, practical project number five, the test two reminder, and the rest of the time will be dedicated to discussing the final research submission and document, as well as any additional questions you have. We also have one case study presenter tonight. All right, so I also want to apologize. I just realized I didn't upload your video to Moodle. However, I can share with you the link for the other group. It looks like I only uploaded one of your um, second sessions last week. All right, so the live session objectives is involves the following. It's to ensure that you understand what's due, when it's due, and how to score all your points, to ensure that you don't fall behind in your coursework, and to ensure that we have proper functioning groups. What is due? So upcoming, we have practical project number five due on the 20th of November. Followed by test number two, you have between now and the 25th of November to get that done. It's multiple choice as well as true or false. The password is there on Moodle, it's coins. And you will have um, between now and the 25th to get it done. The final research submission will be on Moodle. And on Moodle, you'll be required to submit the following your document which involves all of the chapters uh, this document is going to be submitted as a word document you will also be submitting a powerpoint presentation of the document as well as the video recording of you presenting that presentation so those three submissions will be made on moodle no later than the 27th of november and that would conclude our course so let's look briefly at practical project number five. In this practical project, you are being hired as a consultant here at the University of Belize, and your specialty specialization rather is in management information systems. You are assisting with the preparation of a budget for the Department of Math, Physics, and Information Technology. Your responsibility is to ensure that the budget is created in Google Sheets and it looks professional. UB would like for you to obtain the pricing information and capabilities on hardware as well as software for 20 staff, six computer labs, one physics lab, and five general classrooms. You are also required to create an organogram to better visualize the MPIT department Note that the department has a dean, a chair, a secretary, six information technology lecturers, eight math lecturers, and three physics lecturers. In addition, the department has access to six computer labs, which house 20 students daily, four in Belmopan City, one in Punta Gorda Tong, and one in Belize City. It also has physics labs, and access to five general classrooms. So now that you've been given the general idea of how many persons you are trying to serve, this gives you an idea of how you're going to work on your budget. As you prepare the breakdown of the resources that would be required, you must pay attention to the specifications of these devices to ensure that they meet at least the minimum requirement and you're sourcing prices both online as well as locally. The online prices, we're recommending that you use amazon.com to get your pricing for the online uh, budget. And you're trying to get the price of 145 desktop computer systems. Now this is not 145 different brands of computers. This might be the same brand of computer. You might have selected Dell, HP, Macintosh, and you might decide to purchase 145 of the same brand, or you might have decided that 
teachers are going to have a different model of computer versus what some of the students would have based on their need. So again, this information is given to you so that you can make the best decision. But whatever you put in, we are expecting 145 desktop computer systems. And so that means that it will have the computers, the monitors, the keyboard, and the mouse. So it's not the laptop. After finding the prices online, ensure that the price includes your the shipping costs to Belize, any duties or taxes, as well as the amount of time it takes to ship to Belize. You can contact local vendors. There is Angela's Press, there's Full Tech. You can even contact, if you have friends in customs or you can just go to the immigration website and find out the section on duties and any tariffs that are required. So this is uh, your last research project as a group. And here it says the 7th of May, but that date is incorrect. It's due on the 20th of this month, all right? So as we proceed, I wanted to cover that for persons who were still not quite clear on the assignment instructions. Also on Moodle, you will be able to see some examples of benchmark presentations or templates that you can use. Now these templates gives you a breakdown of what is expected. It gives you the Excel sheet and the categories that we expect to see in your sheet. You do not have to style it the way it's done here. You can style it as you desire. However, we want it to look professional and you, as you are a consultant, you can put in your logo and your brand and everything. You can design it as you choose. To copy it, you might go over to file, make a copy, and then you'll be able to edit that. But look at the table. It has the specifications. And please fix any grammatical errors that you see in the document as well. We have the PC components, the American or the online price, and then the price conversion in Belize dollars. We also have the section for international prices of PCs. Again, this table breaks down what is expected for this um, criteria here. And some of the other things that would be required in your labs are printers. Now, printers don't come without ink, so you'd have to bear in mind the different associated costs. You'd have to think about paper, um, anything else that might be required for a lab to function well as it pertains to technology. So you might consider a printer that has the all-in-one. It might be a scanner, printer, etc. Okay. You also have a table just for shipping and then Notice that the assignment didn't just say hardware, it also mentioned software. So some of the software we're considering are antivirus, and you're not limited to these here. If you make any additional purchases or considerations for purchases in your budget, then include those in that table. Now, this workbook has several sheets. This is the international pricing list. We also have the local price list. And here you can go ahead and put in the relevant information. We also have a summary comparing everything by unit because again, we want the most cost-effective solution. If we're going to purchase these items, we'd like to see if it's cheaper to purchase it locally or internationally. You're also asked to create an organogram and an example is here. Please don't just copy this. Make sure you have verified that you represent the organogram as the case has presented it to you and that the structure is accurate, okay? So you don't have to do it the way it's done here. You can be a little bit more creative and make it um, professional and rep a very good representation of what the case that you've give been given in chapter five is saying. Okay, another example was given to you, similar concept, You'll notice that the, the labels are the same. We're looking at quantity, item number, description, specification, the Belizean amount. Um, here, the sheets weren't labeled, but the information is basically the same. We're looking at shipping and import fees, the cost of the items, description, your grand total, and of course, the sources that you're using, and you have another sheet for your organogram. 
So these were just two examples that Dr. Ryan shared on Moodle that you can use with your group as you prepare this presentation. You will be required to do a recording for this um, submission as well, just as you have done for every other practical project presentation. You will have to create your spreadsheet, but um, go ahead and present this um, breakdown for us in a video recording. Okay, so just like you've done for all the other practical project presentations. So before we continue, I want to take the attendance. So let me just see who is in class. Right after the attendance, we're going to have our first or our only case study presentation for tonight. So um, the case study presenter can get ready to share her screen after I finish taking the attendance. Just a minute. All right, my at um my attendance book is not opening. I don't know if there's a glitch in the system. So what I will ask you guys to do: kindly type your name in the chat. And then our case study presenter is going to start presenting right after. All right, thank you guys. Starla, you may proceed. Good night, everyone. Miss, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Good night again. Um, tonight, I'll be presenting the case study, Look to the Cloud. Um, on tonight's agenda, I'll be covering the objectives, a summary of the case study, the questions, and the conclusion. So for the objective tonight, um, we have three questions in regards to the case study. What business benefit do cloud computing services provide? What problems do they solve? What are the advantages of cloud computing? And what kind of businesses are most likely to benefit from using cloud computing and why? So before we begin, this is a short introduction of what is cloud computing. Cloud computing is the delivery of an on-demand computing services that includes servers, storage, database, and networking software over the internet, which is the cloud, to offer faster, innovative, and flexible resourceful data to its users. So this is a summary of the case study. Look to the cloud. This comprehensive case study offers a delightful insight on cloud computing in organizations. It shares that cloud computing has become an affordable and sensible option for companies of all sizes, ranging from tiny computer startups to established companies like Netflix and FedEx, and is now the fastest growing form of computing technology. It further highlights both the benefits and limitations of cloud computing 
and why every company should incorporate some kind of core computing technology into their business. So we have question one, what business benefit do core computing service provide? So according to the case study, core computing offers an extensive amount of benefits. We have it's cost efficient for users and businesses. It allows businesses to spend more time on higher value work rather than maintaining their IT infrastructure. And three, it allows businesses to transmit and store a large amount of data and information. So for instance, in this study, Amazon operates on a web service, which is the Amazon Workspace, which provided subscribing companies with flexible computing power and maximum data storage, as well as data management, which aids in allocating a large amount of data resources. This cloud computing allows Amazon to be more cost efficient while focusing on much more higher work value. Question two, this well, this is a continuation. What problems do they solve? So um, cloud computing solves two problems. One is the collaboration dilemma. So it allows users to share and collaborate seamlessly from all different locations. Therefore, there is little to no need for face-to-face -face interaction. And the second one is loss of data information. So cloud-based softwares are accessible on any devices that has a stable internet connection. So which in eliminates the problem of hard drive disk getting lost or damaged where no data restoration can occur. So this is the second question. What are advantages of cloud computing? The first disadvantage is unexpected runaway costs. So for some integrated cloud services that has an existing IT infrastructure, or it has any errors, or it has high web traffic because the cloud is the internet, it may cause the users bill to run up. So they might have a high bill to pay for their usage. And internet connection is always needed. Being that the cloud is the internet, so once the internet connection is down, cloud services are down as well. This poses us a great disadvantage because downtime can cause a business to lose profit as time is money. The last disadvantage is that information misfortune due to cyber attacks. So because cloud computing is on the website um, and many important data is uploaded, you can easily have a hacker that can breach one system and it can be a massive loss for any given company. Next question is, what kind of businesses is most likely to benefit from using cloud computing and why? So, a small business or startup companies, rather than paying a larger company to manage or maintain their data or build an entire data center, which will cost a lot of money, small businesses can utilize a computing cloud, like the Amazon Workspace that is relatively available to as one of their cloud computing in their company. And the conclusion is that cloud computing can be very useful for businesses and individual consumers alike. It's not just a tool to use, it is a way for businesses to make profit and maximize profit as we talked about during the presentation. While cloud computing has been treated as a cheap and more flexible alternative than creating an individual data center, it has its downside. All in all, cloud computing has taken greater roles in the business world, and every business should incorporate the use of the service in their company. And set of references, and that's it, Miss. Thank you, Starla. Um, what were some weaknesses that you found um, in the study? I found some weaknesses, the same one that it always, you always need access to the internet. So for like me, I don't have, if you don't have a data plan on your phone when you're on the go, and let's say you have one of your information on your phone or on other devices, you cannot access it until you are um, 
connected to the net. And also one of them is the, the hacking. Sometimes you can upload some of your important information on your cloud devices and, and steal your information. Um, what's the biggest connection you could see between this case and our Belizean context that you'd want to leave with the class? Um, Miss, can you please repeat the question? Uh, do you see any connections between this case study and our Belizean context? Um, I... I see a connection because a lot of businesses like the company I work for, we have a, we utilize Amazon Workspace, um, a part of our company. So we could like um, connect with the information, like how we collaborate. So I would say it has a connection to Belize with some of the companies that's right here. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, we are going to be discussing our MIS project for the remainder of the class time. And I'd like to talk about the different chapters but before I do, let me go back to um, chapter four and five. Now, in our discussion, we mentioned that we were looking at the data analysis in our last class, rather, and we spoke about how you were going to be able to get your averages so that you can proceed with writing up your data. I wanted to show you some of the students' work from past submissions, just so that you could see in actuality what you're preparing. When you have your graphs and you've been able to get those representations, you're going to just put into words what the graph is saying. So let me go down to chapter four. All right, I just picked a random paper for this. Okay. And I will ask one person from the class just to read this paragraph here, starting at act, right down to identified. Let's ask. Martha to read for us tonight. Good night. So the data analysis section. Miss? Yes. Okay. At this stage, we will move from basic research to applied research. We will not be testing hypotheses. However, we will be using descriptive analysis to present the data. Given the timing of the research, limitations of the study included time constraints to learn about the stat statistical package for the social science data software tool. Therefore, in order to present a thorough description of the findings from the survey questions, the usage of eight histograms and one bar graph were utilized. After collection of data and to ensure reliability of data, the data were analyzed using Microsoft Excel software and assigned rating scales from seven to one, with seven being strongly agreed, a positive, and one being strongly disagreed, negative, to the construct as summarized in table one. Please refer to figure two to nine for an explicit summary of the correlation between the enterprise application fusion banking system to each of the eight constructs identified. Thank you, Martha. So notice their introduction, right? They've given us an, a context of where we are in the research and they tell us what is being used to analyze this data. So they mentioned that we've moved from basic to applied research. When we were looking at the research chapters in the earlier units, uh, between units one and three, we mentioned that basic research would have been what you do in chapters one and two, where you're just trying to find out what is this thing that I'm trying to learn about? Um, what can I find out? What have other persons said? 
and it, it involves standing on the shoulders of giants. So that's where we get the literature. We try to find out what exists about this topic. Now, the applied research, as the name implies, this involves your going out and doing something with what you've learned to try to either prove or disprove what you have learned. So it's important for you to mention this transition as you go into this chapter. So whoever is writing up this, this um, chapter four, you need to pay attention to the difference between your basic and your applied, just to give us an idea of where we are and how we're transitioning. Now, they mentioned as well, they will not be using the hypothesis testing. Although they mentioned their hypotheses at some point in their research, they went on to say that they're instead using descriptive analysis to present the data. And that's what they've done here. They've shown us the data and then they've gone on to explain. So if you're not quite sure what these are, you can go up and look um, into what descriptive analysis is and what it entails. They went on to also list some of their constraints. So they mentioned the timing of the research was one of the limitations they had. Um, perhaps they were having challenges in terms of getting responses back from participants on time or in a timely manner, or even getting responses, period. Whatever the challenge was, time timing was one of the challenges, or they might have started the research late. Whatever the situation was, this was a great factor for them and a limitation at that. So it included this, this constraints. And they another constraint was learning about the statistical package for the social science SPSS data software tool. So we see a learning curve here. They had to learn about SPSS. So this took some time. Therefore, in order to present their description of the findings, they went on to say, um, how they were going to go about explaining their findings to us in this paper. And they decided to use the graphs that we see here in the chapter. They tell us how we can understand, being the participants just reading the document, they tell us how to understand. So they're telling us what are the um, positive factors, such as they strongly agree being our positive factors, and then our negative factors would be those strongly disagree, et cetera. They describe everything to us so that we can really understand what it is that they're communicating in this chapter. So notice they showed us where we are in the document. They started by doing that great transition, telling us we just left basic research. We're going on to applied. This is what we're using. This is not what we're going to um, use in our study. These are some of our constraints. This is the amount of persons we invest um, sent out surveys to. Um, well, here, I don't see that specifically, but you should include that as well. Tell us how many persons were interviewed, how many responses you received, and um, any if you got um, surveys that were returned blank, also you need to include that in your description. So be as descriptive as possible. They go on to show us the graphs and notice they have the histogram starting from zero to 20 on one of the axes. And then on the other, we have from one to seven. Now in your surveys, you will remember that you might have had your ratings from one to five or in some cases, one to seven. This group did one to seven. So in their analysis, they might have had a few areas blank and they um, would be able to explain and justify their responses in the sections that follow. So the first area they looked at was information quality average. And here it just, I'll just read what it says. It says it shows the average answer of employees in regards to the information quality of information system. The answers were selected from a scale of one to seven where employees rated the information quality to be satisfactory. 18 rated the average and four ranked it to be highly satisfactory. According to the results, most respondents rated the information quality of the information system to be average. So from these responses, you can see what were the average results, what were the satisfactory results, and what were the uh, very good or, or positive results. So those going towards um, one 
would have been your negative results. And then those going more towards seven would be your positive and anything in the middle would be average results, right? Or satisfactory rather. So those are um, things that you can look at. So anything in the middle between one and seven, you know, midpoint. So around three is average or anything less than three or would be um, satisfactory. So we would be able to see based on the scale. And again, they would have to, you would have to describe the scale for us so that we understand the data that's being represented and how we can un, um, assess with you what was coming in from your results. All right, so I've scrolled down to the bottom and you'll see the other chart that I mentioned. In this chart, they're comparing all of these factors. So they're looking at perceived net benefits, use, user satisfaction, service quality, computer self-efficacy, et cetera. So all of these, now that they found the averages per category, they've put all of them side by side and now they've compared them. So in this paragraph now, they go on to compare those averages and then they state their findings there. Okay, I did mention to you that the first part of your survey was going to be represented a little differently. You would not be using a histogram to represent that data collection. Instead, that would be in a table. And this is just a very good example of how you would create that table. Your table will have three columns, the first being characteristics, then number, and then percentage. So those are the three areas that we're looking at. So there you spoke about the biographical data of the person. They, it would include their gender. Um, some of you had different biographical data questions, but you would list that all of that section in a table. So if you were looking at how many years they were working at an institution, then that would be there. If you were looking at the industry they were working in, this would be here as well. And the number of responses would go in the column adjacent to that. And then in the last column, you'd have that number as a percentage. So that demographical data or that um, background data that we see first must be in the table and everything else goes in histograms. From the chapter four analysis, after you've looked at the charts and you've written in words what the charts are saying, you are able to go right into your conclusion. And anything that was noteworthy, you can bring out here. This also ties up your whole document. It's going to bring in some of the things that you mentioned in chapter one, like your objectives. You're answering questions that you may have mentioned in chapters one and two, and addressing it, um, the responses to those based on the evidence you just got from chapter four. So everything is tied up in this fifth chapter. This group went ahead to say, this study has applied the Delon and McLean information systems model in the banking context. So they let us know what it's looking at. The concerns in this research addresses the method for measuring the success of the FBE system, one such application used in the banking community. The objective was to develop a model for measuring the effectiveness of organizational information systems, as well as an FBE success measurement model that was developed based on the popular Delon and McLean. So after they've you know, given us the context, they go on to address um, the relationship between the eight success variables, which were hypoth yes, this word, Hypothesize. Excuse me, miss. Yes. I don't know if it's just me, but is that are you breaking up for anybody else? Because it's just starting to break up. I don't know if it's my internet or what's happening. Just checking. Uh, it's the same for me too. Okay. Um, are you hearing me any clearer now? I think it's something with this because um some of my group members are having issues joining i got kicked out just now and was put in a waiting room for a few minutes miss okay it could be because i am not able to access Zenegrade. and last night a few of my students were having the same issue they actually couldn't even get into moodle so i don't know what's going on but um let's see how far we can get 
tonight. And then if you hear it breaking up again, just let me know. All right, I'm going to wrap up this chapter here, though. It just concludes the whole um, document and you address any limitations that you were able to see. So notice three parts. The conclusion, it summarizes the document. You state any major findings. You speak about your limitations. And then you tell us any opportunities for future research. So those are the three things that I should be seeing in chapter five. All right. Now, I want to hear from the different groups. Um, what is your strategy for completing this document? Let's start with group number one. Good night, miss. Good night. Um, okay, okay, so um, we already set, um, have our, our template and everything set up for the final project already, but before we can even move on or complete that, we're focusing on project five first and then I understand that um, this weekend and all of next week, we're gonna focus on mainly our final project. We're gonna take it day by day. Okay, thank you. Are you using a divide and conquer approach in terms of one person working on a different chapter or is it a team effort for each chapter? Um, we're using the divide um, approach to, um, just to lessen the stress from for everybody. So, um, and then when everyone is done with their information, they'll put it on the document and we can um, check it to see if it's correct or change anything. Okay, that's good. And all the members of your group are working with you. Yes, mom, everyone is cooperating. Okay, that's, that sounds good. Okay, let's go on to group two. Good night, miss. Um, so we're basically already started the final paper. Um, most of our communication is done through WhatsApp, but however, we're, we're not doing the divide and conquer approach. We're gonna do everything as a group just so that we can make sure that when we finish one section, we're all in agreement and we can move on to the next. Okay, thank you, group two. Group three? Um, similar to group one, we we are dividing the work simply because of time. And um, also I think it's a lot easier if we all take it by sections and then at the end, we all review what was done and make changes. Thank you, group three. Group four. Um, group four, if you were speaking, I wasn't hearing you. Um, Juana, let's hear from you for group four. Juan, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was just asking you for an update from your group. Um, we're starting to work on the final pro on the project five. And what about the major project, your research project? Yes, ma'am. We're working on that. Okay. Is it that you have different persons working on different chapters or are you all working on the chapters as you go ahead, as you go along? We're working together, Miss, on all the chapters. Okay. All right. So I've taken you back to the top of the Moodle um, page 
and Dr. Ryan has done some cleaning up on the page for us. So at the top where it says additional resources, you'll be able to see the material there that you can use. There's the research model paper. And it just gives you the a, a layout of what your document may entail, right? So it's just a model for what your, your paper could look like. All right, so this was for the persons who wanted to know if we were going to have the different columns. It's going to be no columns, you'll notice here. So it starts with your topic, your authors, and then you have your abstract, the introduction, and then it continues into the different sections. Okay, additionally on Moodle, you'll be able to see the how to conduct a literature review link that was there just in case the person's working on the literature needs to go back to this, but I believe you would be past this by now. Um, but these are still on Moodle for you to refer to just in case you get stuck. Okay, this looks like the same one I just clicked on. All right, he has two links here though for you to review. Okay, now you'll notice that the survey is here. Some of you did both of the surveys. So you have um, the option, you have the opportunity now to decide which of them you're going to use. Because at first uh, we were having problems with this original survey. And so we were given another one to use. But if you have both of them, then you can just choose which one you're going to go ahead with. One of the things I want to recommend, and I've been seeing this mistake with some of the students, I'll just open this. When they were collecting data, um, they didn't use numbers here. So instead you might have had strongly agree, agree, um, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree. So in your data analysis now, when you look at the creating your histograms, you would have a problem. So what you'd have to do is go to your Excel sheet and then convert those words to numbers, to corresponding numbers. All right, so for example, if you had um, strongly disagree as one, then you'd have to replace all of those in your survey so that you could create your histograms. So all I'm saying, if you didn't use numbers and you use words instead, then it would be hard to find averages. You'd have to convert all those words to the corresponding numbers, as you would have seen here. So if you did that, um, then that would be an additional thing for you. But if you use numbers, then you're good. It's easy for you to find those averages. All right. So I'm now opening up the floor to questions from you guys. And Gabriel, kindly uh, upload the link to your presentation on the Google Sheet. I notice it's still blank. Which link is? The presentation you did last week. Okay. Okay, so if there are no questions from you guys, uh, we are dismissed for this. Mr. Point. Point 5 is just a Google Sheet, right? For practical project five, yes. You're doing, well, you're doing the, the, you're uploading the. The PowerPoint, yeah, project five, I meant to see. <laughs> yes, you're uploading yeah. the Excel sheet and your video. So don't forget to do the video recording of you presenting what you have in your Excel sheet. That's all you're uploading. Thank you. Okay. Did everybody type their name in the chat? Those who were in class? I came late and I typed my name afterwards. Okay, no problem. Once it's there, because I'm not getting into Xenograde for some reason. All right, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will see you on Thursday. Good night, Good night.
Good night. Good night.